Hi, Luke. Hi, Luke. <laughs> Good morning, friends, and welcome on this, the Lord's Day. The Lord be with you. It is uh, good to be with you today, uh, this day of, of rest. We can pause from our labor and all of our activities and seek the peace of God and uh, the um, encouragement of community. So it's good to be with you. A special welcome to those of you who are here this morning as visitors or guests. We're grateful for your presence and uh, pray that the Lord will bless our time together. There is a gift for you if you're here as a visitor or a guest in our narthex. Uh, following the service, there is a table in the corner uh, with a beer mug, and uh, it's actually a coffee, coffee mug, and, and some information about our, our church. Uh, it's good to have you with us. Just a few announcements as we begin our time. A reminder that today uh, we are uh, saying goodbye formally to um, Connie and Bob Hastings, and uh, we'll be bringing Connie and Bob up a little bit later in the service, but there is a reception for them following our uh, time of worship down in Fellowship Hall, so we invite you to come and um, offer them some encouragement and parting words. Also, a reminder that we are in the midst of our second mile uh, campaign, um, second mile giving, which goes directly to missions. There is information, more information in our clarion. I believe their clarions are outside uh, on the left. You'll see them on the wall there if you haven't received yours already. And has a, a larger description of the ministries that we're supporting uh, through this second mile giving for missions. But there will be, the next two Sundays, we'll have folks come up front and share with you uh, what, where we'd like those funds to go toward. Also, I believe this is your last Sunday if you'd like to uh, uh, purchase Easter flowers to adorn the front of our sanctuary here on Easter morning. There is a uh, order form here if you'd like to fill that out and place it in the offering plates as they're passed along with uh, a check or some money, we invite you to do so. Are there any other announcements we should make this morning? Let me invite you then to stand and welcome. Oh, yep, Connie. Yes. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. 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 I have uh, three of those in my freezer, so, so thank you. Let me invite you to stand and welcome your neighbor to this morning's service.
Please rise for the call to worship. By grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift from God. The hymn is the number 57, verses 1 through 5 and 7. Let us sing together as we begin our time in worship. present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Here in this place, help us to perceive your unseen hand and to attend the gentle guidance of your spirit in worship that we may know the joy you give your people. Amen. Please be seated. And we're turning now to the Psalter reading, Psalm 107, 1 through 9, 33 through 43 on page 830 in the hymn book. <clears throat> reading responsively. O oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord has redeemed from trouble, and gathered him from the tank, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city in which to dwell. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, who delivered them from their distress. And led them by a straight way till they reached a city in which to dwell. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For the Lord satisfies those who are thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. The Lord turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground. A fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. The Lord turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. The Lord lets the hungry dwell there 
and they establish a city in which to live. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. They multiply greatly by the blessing of the Lord, who does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, the Lord pours contempt upon princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But the Lord raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness stops its mouth. Whoever is wise, give heed to these things, and consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Can I have all the children come up for the children's message, please? Up, I need you guys up here, standing on top. All right. I've got a contest. I've got questions, and you're going to have to tell me whether you did it or not, okay? All right. Raise your hand if you came to church today. All right. You all score one point for that. How many of you came to Rise Against Hunger yesterday? All of you? You all score one point for that, too. How many of you helped someone who needed it recently? Oh, a couple. Okay. How many of you gave money to the church? Someone's in the lead. How many of you invited a friend to church? Okay, who scored the most points? I think you did. I think it was you. Okay, so does that mean you win more of God's love than everybody else? It doesn't. Okay, everybody sit down. Sit down, sit down. Okay, in our scripture today, um, they talk about how God loves you no matter what. If you do great works, it's a wonderful thing and it's very helpful for all that we need to do. But God loves you anyway, okay? Which reminded me of one of my favorite children's stories, which I have right here. Olivia. Have you read Olivia? Do you guys know it? Okay, so Olivia's a pig, and she has all sorts of stuff that goes on in here. She builds giant sandcastles. She wears all sorts of clothes. She does artwork. She dances. But at the very end, here's the coolest line. She's laying down with her mother. And she says, when they finish reading their books, Olivia's mother gives her a kiss and says, you know, you really wear me out, but I love you anyway. And Olivia gives her a kiss back and says, I love you anyway, too. <laughs> so I don't know if you wear God out. Sometimes I think maybe. I know I do sometimes. But God loves you anyway. Do great works, that's helpful for all that we're trying to do in the world. But God loves you anyway. Always remember that. No matter how many points you score. Okay? All right, pray with us, guys. Lord, thank you for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to help others in Rise Against Hunger and in other opportunities. Help us to remember that great works are helpful to your kingdom, but that no matter what, you'll love us anyway. Amen. Thanks, guys. Join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, in order, in order that, that the children of earth might discern good from evil, you sent your Son to be the light of the world. As Christ shines upon us, may we learn what pleases you and live in all truth and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us continue in silent prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us join together hymn number 365, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. service when we can pray for our family. Uh, just to report back, last Sunday, I, I feel like I've been away for a while. Uh, we, we were at the confirmation retreat in uh, Pocomus. It was the first time I was uh, there to visit our Delaware camp. It's a beautiful place. It was a little chilly. It was a little, <laughs> little windy. Uh, we slept a little bit, but I think it was a great experience. There were about 35 youth that were there. And um, we have some pictures I'm sure you'll be seeing, hopefully, uh, later during our youth service in April. But um, it was a great experience. So I'm still recovering, That's if, you, if you're wondering. Um, uh, joys or concerns? Joys or concerns this morning? Any joys you have? Yes, seen in the back there. Yes, Mara. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mara. Mara's uh, word of thanksgiving for God's steadfast love and uh, for the love of our congregation in been a very difficult time. It's good to have you, Mara, with us today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
your niece Barbara is battling cancer, and then um, your brother is going back in for more surgery. So we pray for both um, for, for healing. Yep. Shirley? Uh, David uh, had his first round of chemotherapy and I think has four more rounds to go. So um, prayers for David and his healing and well-being and for Shirley. Yep, 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 yes. Yeah, Joanne Theobald uh, had a chance to see Joanne last week and she's doing well. Um, of course, the lung transplant so takes a long time, so she's still trying to gain her strength. The doctor said over a year so she would get her original strength back. So continue prayers for Joanne. Eric? Uh, my grandmother took a stroll one day and broke her head. Uh, this after having surgery on Thursday. So she, she's going to yeah, She does need our prayers, doesn't she, Eric? Eric's grandmother, knee replacement, fell and broke a wrist and, and her hip. So um, some prayers for your grandmother. Yeah. Yes? Judy. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 she, <laughs> so you're serious? Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. That's good news, Judy. Continued prayers. Carl? Ian Clark was adopted, a new nephew? So um, Carl's new nephew, Ian, uh, good news, his brother adopting him on Friday. Yes, yes, Jen. Uh, prayers for Patty, uh, a classmate of Jen. Jen's involved in her class reunion, and I, so I guess you keep in touch with a lot of your friends. So we, we pray uh, for her, her brother, Rito. Yeah. Okay. Yes, the Lord. <coughs> Carol, who's having hip surgery tomorrow. Larry? Teenage friend of uh, Larry and Bonnie's who was in a car accident, and there were some fatalities. He survived, but he's in the hospital. So, so prayers for those families, and for this young man. Yes. Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Good, good to be here. Thank you, Lisa. A student of Lisa's, 11, 11 years old, was uh, taken out of her home and is now in foster care. So, prayers for her and her family and for some permanent, healthy solution. Anyone else? Yes, Tressa? Prayers for the Hearts Dog family. Uh, let me invite you, friends, into a time of prayer. So, uh, we intercede on behalf of those who have been brought uh, to mind and heart as they've been named out loud, and those that we each bring with us, even in the silence of our hearts to this time, uh, family members, loved ones, uh, friends, our country. Um, wh wh however the Lord leads you, let us now intercede on behalf of one another.
Well, Lord, how we need you. Every hour we need you. We thank you for this hour, for your abiding presence with us. For those, Lord, who are suffering, even our brothers and sisters in our, in our church family, we lift up to you prayers of healing, um, prayers of, of um, peace. Lord, for family members uh, that uh, have come to mind, and even, um, Lord, friends who are in a time of need, those who are grieving, those who are recovering in hospitals, uh, we bring before you our, our extended family and friends. Lord, Lord we bring before you our nation uh, and its people. We pray for the healing of our nation, the healing of divisions, uh, the healing of of bitterness and strife, uh, that you might even form of us a more perfect union. We pray for our nation. Lord, we give you thanks uh, for the gift of our church and its, its ministries, even to be able through our hands, Lord, to prepare many meals that will help to feed others. We remember your words that as we've done it to the least of these, we've done it unto you. We thank you for that opportunity uh, that was given. Lord, we bring all of these, our requests, before you and our gratitude as we pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Remembering this word of scripture, let us... Now offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
let us pray together. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor and glory. All in heaven and on the earth is yours, and of your own we give you. Amen. Scripture reading is from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When I started my preparation for today, I got the computer out, set it up, put up a Word document, started typing. 
I was good to go. I had everything that I was going to say there. Now, I didn't hit save yet. <laughs> and all I hear is, Daddy, I'll help you. And then buttons clicking. <laughs> Something's wrong when your six-year-old can type faster than you. <laughs> and I look at the screen, and all I see is a bunch of gibberish. So he goes, Daddy, I helped you. You're done. Let's wrestle. As he proceeds to put me in a headlock. <laughs> now, naturally, I wanted to be mad. But seeing that he was choking his daddy out, I couldn't. <laughs> so I said, let's, let's play. So I played with Harlan. I said, Harlan, I got to fix my sermon. He goes, Daddy, no, you don't. I fixed it for you. <laughs> so I prepared another one. Totally different than the first one. And as I looked at my sermon and the scripture, I said, okay, let me practice. Here comes Finnegan. Finnegan's teething. Don't you know, Finnegan got sick all over my paper. So I think God is trying to tell me something. <laughs> because here's the second time that this got ruined. So I pull it up again. This time I saved it. Printed it out. So I said, I'm going to wait until there's no kids around so I can practice. Well, this morning, about 3 a.m., as I'm up with Lucas, I say, you know what, I'm up anyway. Lucas is somewhat not fussing. Let me practice. As I'm reading, I said, God, is this really what you want me to say today? The answer was no. So me being me, I quickly pulled out the computer, go downstairs with Lucas, and here I am plucking away with one hand and a baby in the other, trying to feed him with my chin and look at the computer screen. My wife comes downstairs and goes, what, what are you doing? I said, what does it look like I'm doing? She goes, yeah, you need to talk to your pastor because this ain't going to work. So as I was looking at the scripture, I said, what is Paul talking about to Ephesians? Because there was a lot of yous and us and then we's. And he was talking to, in verses 1 and 2, saying, you were dead in sins, or trespasses and sins, speaking to the Gentiles, the non-Jews. He goes on to say, in which we once lived following, or in which you once lived following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. They were dead. Their souls were dead. They were under Satan's power, separated from God. They were missing the mark. They weren't hitting the target. Let's go back to the football. It's like I'm the quarterback, and my receiver's over there, but yet I insist on throwing the ball over here, and nobody's over there. For us golfers, well, I'm not a golfer, so I can't even say us golfers, but for the golfers, it's like, okay, I know where the T is or where the, the hole is, but I'm going to hit it in the opposite direction. 
<clears throat> but by the grace of God, we don't have to stay dead. I was reading in one of my books that I'm reading, it said, it is the nature of the Holy Spirit to begin things, to make something out of nothing, to offer possibility. The Holy, God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can be resurrected. We don't have to be dead anymore. We can be lifted up and live with Christ. I look at today and I'm thinking, have I been resurrected in and with Christ? I started to ask myself a couple questions that might answer these questions for me. I ask myself, am I being a good husband as I might be? Am I being a good, as good a father as I could be? Am I being as good of a son as I could be? And as I think, the answer is, we're always trying to be better, but just as in Jesus' resurrection, he didn't die and then immediately rise from the dead, he rose again on the third day. It's a process. We're not gonna say, we don't, we're not born again and say, okay, I'm born again, yes, Jesus, I'm gonna follow your ways. Now, lift me up. It's a process. We have to learn. We have to, to study. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I look at my journey, I see that my current journey is part of my resurrection, being raised up, becoming better, being the person that I should be, being the Christian that I should be. Taking those chances. Let me tell, let me tell you a story. I hate flying. I can't stand flying, and I'm horrified of heights. Horrified. Not so much the heights, but falling from the heights. <laughs> so, way back when, when I was stationed in Korea, I said, you know what? I hate flying. I'm horrified of falling from heights. Let me go to jump school. If I can get through jump school, I won't be afraid of heights no more. So I go through ground week. Everything's good, I'm on the ground, everything's fine. I go through tower week. Okay, I'm in this tower, shaking like a little bird. But okay, I can get through, I can get through tower week. I'm, I'm hooked up to cables, harnesses, I'm good. Make it through tower week. Now, it's jump week. I said to myself, you know what? Do I really have to do this? <laughs> I haven't entered the plane yet, so therefore I don't have to jump out yet. But then I thought, you know what? I have to do this. I have to overcome my fear. I have to take charge and die right in. So my very first jump at jump week, I'm going, I'm jumping number three. Well, jumper number two stumbled, and he did a somersault out of the plane, got all tangled up. So now I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I, what I just watched, I'm not jumping out this plane. And so I jump. I jump. Made it to the ground. I see, I didn't know it was my buddy at the time, but I see some, a ball falling from the sky. My buddy's chute didn't open. His reserve didn't open. So the black hats are telling him, the jump master wore the black hats, so we call them black hats. All they're saying to him is to curl up into the ball. So I'm thinking to myself, this, this guy is, something's about bad about to happen to this guy, and the only thing they're gonna tell him is to curl up into a ball. And at the last possible second, his shoes open. So I said to myself, I'm not doing this. This is not safe. No sane person would do this. <laughs> well, 
I don't know if you noticed or not, I'm not exactly the most sane person in the world. So I go back for my jumps. So I jump, complete my jumps. Okay, I'm good. I go back to my unit, I'm good. We're jumping all day. Love jumping. I love jumping. I love when I'm falling through the air. It's so peaceful. I don't necessarily like the landing so much, but I love falling through the air. Well, let me tell you, I'm still afraid of heights. <laughs> I still don't like flying. But the point that I'm trying to make is as we get resurrected in and with Christ, the stuff that we might be afraid of or why we might not go this route, we got to dive right in. Because if we walk with God, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right because we have the grace. God has blessed us with the gift of the Holy Spirit that makes us alive again. There's a feeling that I get. I think the majority of people, they get when they accomplish something, a good feeling, a feeling inside that they might not necessarily be able to explain. And I look at this and I say, you know, I'll ask myself again, have I actually been resurrected with Christ? Because there should be a, in my mind, there's a certain feeling I should be feeling once that has been accomplished. Now, the answer might not necessarily be no, be no, it might be I'm in the process, which I'm okay with that, but anybody knows me, I don't like to wait. I like to know what the task at hand is, and I like to take the steps at the task at hand. Last time I told God, come on, let's go, hurry up, I didn't like the outcome. I'll tell you that, I'll tell you that right now. He made me wait even longer. <laughs> God is rich in his mercy toward us. being born again and resurrected in and with Jesus Christ, our Lord. I ask everyone the questions that I continually ask myself. Have you been resurrected in and with the Lord Jesus Christ? And what does that mean to you? Now, Bob, because you want to move to Florida, I'm going to cut it short <laughs> so we can um, do this liturgy for you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day that we can come and worship together with you. We pray that as we go into the world that we will be the examples that the world needs to see as peace and joy and that we will also lift each other's up and raise them with us as we get raised in your name. Amen. Well, Pastor Dave has prepared a liturgy for us collectively. Join our hearts and voices um, in uh, thanksgiving to God for the ministry of the Reverend uh, Connie Hastings among us these past seven years and, uh, and to give thanks for her life and for the future that unfolds before her with her husband, Bob, so we invite them to come forward at this time, Connie and Bob. Uh, and we're going to uh, invite you to join together in this liturgy of Thanksgiving, which the pastor is going to lead. And he's asked me just to say a personal word uh, before we do this, and so I'm going to do that by saying that um, Connie and I came to this church about the same time together. I think I was uh, asked to join the staff 
in September of um, 2011. And if I'm not mistaken, a week or so after that, Connie and Bob came. And Connie uh, brought uh, something unique to our congregation as uh, a deacon, a clergy person of the annual conference, something almost brand new at the time she came, taught us what that meant, but not only in her words and her descriptions of how she was uh, connected in ministry, but in the way in which she led us in so many wonderful expressions of outreach and justice and, and, um, and help in our ministry. So we're grateful to God for these seven years, or I have been, of learning what it is to be a clergy deacon in the United uh, Methodist Church and uh, learning also how wonderful it is when you're a deacon and you join a staff, uh, your husband is there with you, your mate is there with you, and gets away with driving a Corvette <laughs> while, you, <laughs> while you lead us down into the city to do the hard work of mission. Bob tools around Brandywine 100 and uh, really <laughs> helps us understand what it really is to live. <laughs> so says the man with the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it from you. <laughs> yeah. So Connie and Bob, thanks uh, so much for exemplifying in your ministry of wellness the spirit, the love of Jesus Christ and the extreme importance of the mission that we're given uh, to live our faith in the world in such a way that it touches uh, the world which God has died to save. Thank you. God bless you. And as my last official act here, I need to turn over my keys. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you the members and friends of St. Paul's United Methodist Church for the love and support you have shown me and my husband while we have ministered among you. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. As I leave, I carry with me all the memories and things I have learned here. We receive your thankfulness and accept that you now leave to retire we express our gratitude for your time among us. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave with your departure. I accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I encourage your continuing ministry here and will pray for you and the ministries of St. Paul's. Let us pray together. Eternal God, whose steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting, we give you thanks for Connie and all our cherished memories and commend her and Bob into your care as we move in new directions. Keep us one in your love forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good Thank you so very much. Yeah. Um, this morning, I, I was thinking about the uh, passage from uh, Micah, that we are to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. I think for the rest of my life, I will always connect that verse with St. Paul's. And um, by the way, you let Bob get away with a lot more than a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bob. So thank you. Bob, now's your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I first came in this morning, Dave said I had 20 minutes to a half an hour to, <laughs> <laughs> to tell you all I wanted to say about this church. And because Brandon fooled me, I thought he was going to be a lot longer than he was. Uh, I'm going to shorten mine to uh, something probably under a half an hour. <laughs> I want to thank God first for the privilege of letting me be a part of this church. 
And I want to thank the parishioners of St. Paul's for the privilege of letting me work with you, and worship with you, laugh with you, have fun with you, feed people as we did yesterday with you. It's just been a great journey for me. And I hope to continue my journey in Jacksonville. Connie and I are looking for a church that has been as good to, to uh, us. And we want to participate and do some of the very same things we've done here. We ask for your blessings and for your prayers. If I could have another 20 minutes, I would like to thank everybody that's worked in small groups, that's been in my Sunday school class, that's been in my Thursday morning class, that's had a privilege to be on the mission team and all the other things that Connie and I have had a chance to uh, be a part of. So thank you so much for all those privileges. Thank you. I'd like, like to invite everyone to rise for our closing hymn as we sing together. Uh, Blessed be the tie that binds. Are you Now, friends, may you go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. May the wind be always at your back. May the road rise up to meet you. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hands. Amen.